What's up, Warrior Rising family? I am Alyssa. Welcome to another inspiring episode where we dive deep into the incredible stories of veterans who are redefining their purpose through entrepreneurship. Today, we are joined by the Detroit champion, Michael Smith, with Jirene founder. So we are going to be getting in and hearing about his motivation for the business, everything behind it, his experience with Warrior Rising, and so much more. So let's just get right into it. Welcome, Michael. Good morning, Alyssa. How are you? I am doing awesome. We literally just got back from De uh, Detroit, or I did. You're still there. So tell I me about still. your experience. Where are, you, where are you at right now? Are you still riding the high of the event or what? You know, I am. I, I didn't realize how big of a wave it would be. And uh, it's been a pretty big wave. And so, you know, I got back Saturday night because I, I live north of Detroit. And it, it was like, boom, 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 you know. And it's like, holy smokes, man. I haven't got to get off this wave yet. And so uh, yesterday was even more because it was Monday and everybody was kind of a little bit less on Sunday. But yesterday mm -hmm. was it was still going crazy. And so, yeah, I walked, I ain't gonna lie, I walked around with the belt around my house for a bit. Yeah. my wife <laughs> yeah that's awesome yeah. Yeah. yeah so what was your experience uh as pertaining to i mean your training when you actually get there for the pitch prep i mean the other veterans that you worked with like let me know what what was it like so you know i, I came into this kind of kicking and screaming a little bit just because i've done so many you know aj and i and the team have we've done a lot of just pitches to people or just veteran events and they kind of all had the same flair, you know, oh, you're going to do this, you're going to do this, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And it, it just didn't turn out the way, you know, how we envisioned it, right? And so going into Warrior Rising, I kind of had like, oh, this is one of those things again. But then, you know, doing the training, it was like, wow, these, these guys are starting to really resonate because, you know, we've been in business for, you know, with each other for going on five years now. And, yeah. and we got in the worst space you could possibly get into, which is the DOD space. Right. We had jet, you know, images of grand, you know, grandeur. Oh, retired Marine. You know, I, I started programs. I did this. I could just jump right in. I'll get right in and boom. Yeah. That does not happen. So if anybody thinks that they're vastly mistaken, you know, um, it took a lot of grit and grimy and just pushing and opening doors and relationships that you've had relying on those relationships. And so when I went into this, I was like, you know, the trainings, I was like, man, they're really starting to hit some stuff that, you know, we failed at mm -hmm. miserably at the beginning and that, you know, and that we have now, but they just little tweaks that made it better and better and better. And throughout the process, our pitch got tighter and tighter and tighter. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you did so many pitch practices, pitch practices, and it kind of forced you because you're on the docket, you know, people yeah. are looking at you now. and so. Where'd you screw up? And so you know some of the things going in that you didn't know before of where you failed at, which was awesome because there was no feedback mechanisms on, you know, a pitch that went wrong or right. You don't, yeah. you don't know what you did wrong or right. So having these guys that were there that were experienced telling you, hey, here's your here's our feedback to you. I would change this, this, and this. Some things you do, some things you don't. But honestly, we took all the pitches, you know, Reggie, Biz, those, you know, uh, Preston, all of those guys. Yeah. just nailed us a couple of times and hey you got to have thick skin which is good because then you, you take that you take that information and you, you make some just slight adjustments that that make the whole change right and so it worked uh it was a, a top-notch event you know i didn't expect all the things because i don't like getting handouts at all yeah. you know we I, I didn't come from that background i don't like that background right um and it wasn't a handout, it was a hand up, like Jason always says. And so that was encouraging, right? And so when we won, you know, uh, we got to check, but it was like, it's our turn to give a handout or a hand up, right? Because some of the other guys were, you know, they were, they're just beginning and they're struggling a little bit harder than we were. And not to say we're not struggling because, you know, yeah, have we got a couple contracts? Yeah, we've got a couple contracts. All that money gets dumped right back into engineering, you yeah. know? We just took a paycheck last month <laughs> out of five years of yeah. kicking and screaming, you know, and we've gotten lucky here and there, but it was, it felt like the right thing to do, right. To help others out. And cause that's what everybody that was there doing, 
was helping everybody out. And you build those relationships with people and those relationships are what carries you in business, right? Because you can lean on people oh, yeah. for things that you don't have. And so it was pretty important. I kind of got off track there a little bit. Sorry. No, that's okay. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a lot of those things are um, common, what, what people say when they come out. It's that culture. And I, I tell, because I love my role within Warrior Rising because, yes, I'm behind a camera and I do social media and things. But at the same time, I always interact. I love interacting with all the veterans that are competing. I love watching the pitch preps, um, going in there and actually watching the competition happen and then be able to give feedback. Like, you know, I tell a lot of them, uh, like, we're a, like, once you're in Warrior Rising, like, you are a part of the tribe. Like, we don't just let you go. Um, there's a lot of connections that are made even after that I'm seeing happen through social media. Like we're going to collaborate with this previous winner. This person went to this business shower like five years ago and they have like similar ideas. And I love seeing that collaboration happen and, and all these friendships being built. So it's, it's really awesome. Well, cause that's the thing, right? It's the ecosystem. When you first mm -hmm. start in business, you're in no ecosystem. You're just there out there and afraid, right? And you don't know, you don't know what you don't know for one, but then, you don't have those other people to lean on it and shared experiences. It took a long time for us to develop a lot of relationships we have. And if it wasn't for those relationships, we would have been done a long time ago. You oh, know, yeah. I'll give an example. Uh, a guy named Steve Tagge, a good friend of mine. He's the one I met him because AJ said, Hey, go to this event, meet this guy. I didn't even know what that guy looked like. Right. <laughs> Yeah. And so I'm sitting there, I, I bring him up on LinkedIn, which his LinkedIn picture looks nothing like him. Yeah. So I'm sitting there at, and it's at GV, it's at, um, it's at, uh, what's it called? It's Taycom's event here in Detroit. It's a uh, GV sets, right? Okay. It's one of the big shows. So I go there not knowing nothing. I'm sitting at a bar. I have three waitresses around me. And I'm like, hey, can you know who this guy is? And I'm so I have all the waitresses trying to find out who this guy is. Oh, man. And then I finally I finally figured out, I think it's this guy. I, I meet him. And he he's a Marine. So we all automatically, you know, we have the secret handshake. And so he introduces <laughs> me to this other guy who happens to be Steve Tagge, who was a Marine, then went Army, infantry officer, solid, great guy. And so it just kind of, boom, there goes the network. We just started just rolling because, yeah. you know, you don't know that at going in. And if you don't have that personality, you just go out and try it. You know, it, you might yeah. be introverted a little bit. You're not going to do that. And so where do you start? You know, Warrior Rising gives that sleep start of, hey, here's your network where, yeah. oh, I have this question. And then, you you know, you, you just throw it out there and there's going to be a whole bunch of people that reply to it. You know, and you pick and choose what answers you want to go with, what path you want to go. But especially as starting off as entrepreneurs or veteranpreneurs, you know, having that at the initial speeds up your, your OODA loop so fast <laughs> that, yeah, I use the OODA loop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's a it, it speeds, you know, it speeds that circle up so fast that it's, uh, it just gets you jump started way quicker than, you know, you know, than, than what it normally takes. Yeah. And I love to hear that. Cause it's like, you're, you're joining a network already, that community. Um, it's an piece. established so, network of people yeah. that are like-minded people. Right. Yes. So. Yeah. And I mean, listening to, you know, the actual pitch competition, which I already said, like, I absolutely love that part. I mean, you see people light up when they talk about, what they're doing like i absolutely love that for veterans i'll always be a fierce advocate um as a veteran myself but um so seeing all them you know it's never easy to be like you know like they all have it's a diverse it, like it, the industries are all over the place right like you're not mm -hmm. going up there and it's just a bunch of ai or only tech like it's lifestyle business it's everything anything you can yeah. think of i mean hell we had a bucket of bread literally at the same time, you had, you know, and, it's the, <laughs> and it was the first time we had two people in chef uniforms. So I was like, that's also a first, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so it was pretty cool. But not knowing like, you know, oh my gosh, what? So what was it like when you heard first place? Did you have a feeling about it? Did you have an inkling or like, what does that mean for your business? And how did it feel? They, they, they did really well about concealing who won or who didn't win. Right. And yeah, I'll be honest. I didn't watch AJ and I did not watch any of the pitch pitches. Okay. Right. We did yeah. just because we didn't want it. You know, the nerves build up a little bit. Yeah. Right. Cause you're, I mean, it's a competition. Nerves are going to build up, but yeah, we didn't want, we had our, we were solid in what we thought we were solid, you know, with what we we're going to say. Mm -hmm. And we just kept that in our head. 
and we didn't want to, you know, see how the audience reacted. Oh, like, oh, that was a good one. You know, we should do that and make any last second changes because it could just screw you all up. So, yeah, we didn't watch any of the comp pitches at all. And good, bad, or indifferent, you know, I was rooting for the guys and ladies, but we just didn't. So we didn't know what pitches were good, what pitches, you know, yeah. where people were at on their pitches or anything. Mm -hmm. And so we didn't know. I mean, we felt pretty good about it, right? We had a good message. We have a good, you know, we have a good story. Um, and so we, we had no clue. And then, uh, yeah. but people are, you know, saying good job, good job, which is encouraging, but you know, it's kind of, everybody says good job to everybody, right? You don't want to push people down like, oh, dude, you yeah. totally screwed that one. Totally screwed that. Yeah. <laughs> no one's ever going to say that to anybody, you know? So <laughs> we didn't know, but you know, when we were up there and we started hearing number one, number, or, you know, number three and number two, and we're like, holy smokes. You know, I had, I had in my head, like, oh man, if I was on the judge, you know, just based off the people I talked to, I had, I had a person in my head, you know, a company in my head that, you know, I was like, ah, I'd probably go with these guys. And, uh, I didn't hear them. And I was like, oh shit, we actually might have a, we might have, she have a chance. Right. And then they called yeah. our name. I was like, I was a little shocked, you know, and yeah. what was funny is before we went up there, I, you know, AJ and I talked and said, Hey man, if we happen to actually win this you know we should we should give back to the other people that were there with us right and yeah. uh, he's like he's like yep and so you know it, it was a spur of the moment because we didn't think we were gonna win honestly we were just there mm -hmm. for the the experience and you know the networking yeah. is is probably the most important thing out of this whole thing is the network so we didn't we weren't going into it thinking that we were gonna win you know, we were just happy to be there. You know, like I said, the networking. And when it did, it was like, oh, smokes, man. We actually won this thing. <laughs> so it was a little yeah. surreal. And uh, it was cool, you know. And uh, yeah, it was really cool. I ain't gonna lie, it was really cool. That belt yeah. is heavier than hell, though, for a belt, you know. I oh, it's like it legit really leather. Heavy. And yeah, <laughs> it's, no, it's a legit WWE or UFC <laughs> winner's belt <laughs> oh it's, it's legit i know i was trying to prop it up i had to use a tripod when we, people were first coming in because we like to show everyone everyone in the hotel yeah. was so fascinated by the belt because i mean like what other organizations use that i guess i mean i don't know but it's pretty cool i wore it out to my truck because i was parked in a parking lot in my truck and so just to carry all my <laughs> stuff back i had the belt on you know eh, yeah. there's some people looking at you like what the hell <laughs> <laughs> is he a fighter <laughs> like <laughs> yeah it's pretty funny yeah. There's a fight club uh, in the hotel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So tell, so, um, I know you, both you and AJ are, you know, experienced leaders in the military as well um, out now. So how has that role like played in your business? How does it, you know, compare to leading in the military? What are those experiences? like? It's, it's, it's different, right? I mean, some of the leadership traits and principles you still use today, right? Yeah. Like know yourself, seek self-improvement. Uh, you know, know the capabilities your, of your team and employ them the way you can, stuff like that. It, it, those all apply. All those leadership traits and principles that we get drilled in our head apply. You know, uh, if, you know, a lot of times people think, oh, in the military, they just yell and knife hand everybody, you know, mm -hmm. ah, rah, 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 rah. Yeah. if you're doing that, you're failing. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a failed leader. That's a boot camp style leadership. Now, <laughs> does it happen yeah it happens have i done it yeah i've done it you know <laughs> as you get older you realize it, it's not as effective right yeah the worst butt chewing i ever got is when my uh co told me he was disappointed in me on something Oof. you know and i was like i was crushed you know it yeah. crushed me and uh and you know it was awesome though because it was it, it was a really harsh lesson that I took to heart yeah. and, you know, persevered through. So, uh, but I've been yelled at many times. <laughs> it wasn't as effective as that one person saying those two words. Right. Yep. Um, so, yeah. So you take those leaderships, right. And so when you're dealing with people and you're dealing with, you know, we got a CTO that's not a Marine. He's not a service member. You know, he's a super smart kid. I said kid and he's almost 40, but, uh, sometimes, you, you know, we come from different backgrounds. And so when you're dealing with people, it's how do you employ these people for a singular mission, right? That we're going forward to. And, uh, some people aren't used to people actually being honest. Yeah. Right. 
and saying, hey, man, I'm looking out for your welfare on this, you know, blah, blah, blah. We've had conversations where they get upset, you know, like, oh, I could do, listen, I'm trying to help you out here. You know, let me help you out. Where you have other people that, you know, aren't service members per se, that just take advantage of people. Yeah. You know? So that part, I, I think, is the hardest part. It's not hard for me, but it's it's hard for me for them to not to understand that I'm, you know, that when we speak, we're legitimate when we speak, that when yeah. we say we're going to do something, we're going to do it, you know, and I'm not here to to steal from you or, you know, take advantage of you or any of these things from you. And so I think dealing with some civilians like that is different because they're not used to that because they have been taken, you know, yeah. by people that they, they might've trusted or not trusted, but you know, that happens. So. Yeah, and it just takes a couple of times, you know, it's like just build up on that trust with, you know, you just keep showing up and doing what you say you're going to do. And they're like, okay, maybe this is different. And you get to show them yeah. a different, a different way of, you know, being a leader. <laughs> yeah, it's good. crazy, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah. the whole golden rule, treat people how you want to be treated. It mm -hmm. holds fast. So, it's incredible yeah. how, yeah, it seems easy, right? You, you've only been told it since you were a child. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people don't listen. I figured that out yeah. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> also a true. Just don't yeah. So, so what, what's been the most rewarding part of building Jirene from the ground up? That's a, that's a, that's a tough question, right? Uh, <laughs> I think the most rewarding part is, is when one of our systems went to the Ukrainian, you know, went to Poland and helped you know, Ukrainian refugee camp for three weeks. That was pretty weird. Wow. Because, you know, we're making a, a system, you know, we kind of targeted the DOD, but it's water, right? It's making potable water for people. It's non-kinetic. Yeah. We're not trying to hurt anybody. We're trying to help people. And so yeah. when you see your product actually help people and employed, it's like when, it's like when you train in the military, right? You do all this training and then you never deploy and then you finally deploy and you get to use all the skills that you've learned, you know, throughout the years yeah. of training, actually you put them to practice. It's kind of the same thing, right? Is you see your machine or your product actually being used for what it was intended for. Yeah. And that's super reward, right? And so that was one of them. Um, the other one is, is, like I said, the relationships. I've met some of the greatest people I've ever known, you know, doing this and some of the relationships I've built and people I've got to meet doors that have opened, you know, it, it's been pretty amazing. So, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So what, what would be your top pieces of advice to veterans looking to start their own business or become an entrepreneur? Well, if you don't have a lot of time, don't do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, really, that's true. Um, Surround yourself with the team. I started, you know, being an entrepreneur by myself and I failed miserably, right? Mm -hmm. it, it did not work for me. Um, have a close group of people around you that aren't yes people, right? That actually tell you what's wrong or can give you advice and have a team, right? Don't try it by yourself. Have a team with you, whether it's your spouse, a close friend, someone that you can trust. Yeah. Right. You have to have people around you that you can trust to go through this and pick something you're passionate about. Right. If you're passionate about, you know, like bucket of bread, Chris is freaking passionate about bucket yeah. of bread. I love it. Um, If you're passionate, it's it's not work. It, it, it becomes, you know, it becomes why you wake up throughout the day. You know, so it's you don't feel like it's work. You feel like this is it's like your hobby that you know like oh you know someone's into trains oh i got to do my train stuff right it becomes that you know it becomes yeah. your passion and so pick something you're passionate about and then you know surround yourself with the right people and then just start kicking open doors and don't take no because you're gonna get told no a lot yeah you know a lot and you have to put yourself out there get ready so yeah yeah i love those pieces of advice um and I always, I love asking that question because we just kind of stack all these pieces of advice and everyone always has something different to say, but what are you hoping, um, to take Jirene? What's, you know, the next step or what's the goal? So, uh, so we're in a couple good places right now. We just did some training with the air national guard 
out of California, Texas, and Minnesota. So they really like it. We're in with U.S. We're in the Air Force SOCOM space right now. So we're building five for those guys right now. Um, so we want that to grow. You know, the, we want that to really grow and take off. Uh, FEMA and USAID are the next two that we really want to go after because, again, this is not a kinetic thing. This is a life-saving thing. Right where yeah. you can go and provide clean potable water in different climes and places for people that may or may not have it. You know, it doesn't have a it doesn't have a generator sitting there running right next to it. You know, it's operated you know off battery power. Yeah, and so we can run for days without any input. So it's not like it's disrupting around them. Um, and it works. <laughs> yeah, it works. Right. So we're not selling a, a paper tiger. You know, we've built like 17 of them. Now, yeah. you know, there's iterations. You're always constantly improving and finding things that are wrong. But, you know, it's 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 a solid piece of gear. Every time I look at it, I'm like, holy smokes, we actually built this thing. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it's like Pretty you look cool. at it, you're like, oh, man, we did this, you know, and it, it, it was a conglomeration of our team coming together and say, oh, we need this. Oh, we need this. No, take that off. That's bs you don't need that thing right you need this yeah. it needs to be able to do this and so and you know just hard work you know curtis sometimes built these things and, and he was working 18 hour days wow and yeah he's a little machine and uh he, he did some great great work and you know we all showed up on a couple of the builds drilling holes you know it's yeah. raining and we're drilling holes and we're outside yeah <laughs> it was <laughs> it was, you know, our first one was like Monster Garage. We're in, you know, Milton Manufacturing. Got to give a shout out to those guys. So they were a huge help in getting uh, for us to go to an amphibious naval technical exercise. And uh, it was Monster Garage. We built a whole system from wow. scratch in eight days. Dang. In the it was it was crazy. And it we provided all the water for the whole entire exercise because someone actually found feces in one of the water bowls. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. Yeah. So it was good. No, that was good. So that's awesome. Well, to kind of close it out, we like to ask sometimes what is a book that has changed your life or a podcast you listened to that really changed perspective or helped in your journey? Something like that. Never Split the Difference is a great book. Oh, okay. You, it, it's a great book. It teaches you how to negotiate. Um, that was one of my favorite books. Podcasts, mm -hmm. there's a ton of different podcasts, right? I always listen to yeah. Joe Rogan. I'm just a Joe Rogan fan because it's very yeah. <laughs> effective. You're right. Everybody listens. All over the place, yeah. It's all over the place. Um, but I, I find people, you know, that, that resonate with me and then I kind of just listen to I listen to those people. Some people you'll find that they don't share the same value system, so you just don't listen to them, right? You find someone yeah. that shares the same value system, but don't be afraid to look at something different because you don't want to be stuck in a bubble. Right. Yeah. So you have to get different perspectives, uh, yeah. but never split the difference. That was probably one of the best books I ever read for business. For me. So, awesome. Yeah. Well, we definitely appreciate you coming on. We're very proud of you. Very happy for you. And you are forever you. a part of the family of Warrior Rising. So anytime you need anything, you know how to reach out. But let us know and everyone listening or watching um, where they can find you, your business or how can they interact if they're interested in what you guys got going on. So gyrene engineering management, right? We got a website. Go there. Uh our information is on there. Uh if you need we're on LinkedIn. So if you guys have some info uh any questions, hit us up on LinkedIn. And then yeah. Our numbers are on there. We always have our cell phones on. If we can't answer right away, yeah. we'll call you back, and leave a message because you get inundated with a whole bunch of spam calls sometimes. Oh, yeah. Your out there, so please leave a message. And then we'll get yeah. right back to you. AJ's super good about it. Um, yeah. He, he's a he's a force of nature. So, yeah. He's got a contagious laugh, I'll tell you that. He does. My wife, right? everybody loves AJ. You got to have an AJ in your team, right? That just keeps you. You do. It's just that positive. I don't know. There's just something about him. I'm like, I can't help but just be happy with life when I'm around AJ. <laughs> that is so true, right? I mean, yeah. when he comes to our house, you know, and my daughters love AJ. My one daughter, she moved to Savannah. And uh, oh, okay. she was so upset that AJ was here and she wasn't here just because he is so contagious, you know? Yeah. 
I tell him he's like herpes, you know, once you got him, you can't get rid of him. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. Y'all are a great team though. So we're again, yeah. So congratulations again. And uh, we look forward to seeing what Jirene gets into, what you guys get into, but we're going to be connected. So thank you so much for sharing with us a little bit about your experience and your business. And we hope to talk to you soon for catch up. Perfect. Thanks, Alyssa. Appreciate you guys. Take care. For everyone listening, if you are interested in elevating your business for the premier place for veteran entrepreneurs, you can visit us at warriorrising.org. We'll see you next time. See you. Thanks.